I'm Dan Ladenberger, the president of Chemco Aerospace Manufacturing. We're located in St. Louis, Missouri. We have two facilities focused on aerospace and defense structures and complex assemblies. We have large bed and small bed, five axis machines primarily. We have robotic cell that we actually acquired recently. We have water jet capabilities, assembly capabilities, welding capabilities, so a large variety of structural fabrication and machining. We had an opportunity to bid on a large package of work, a single component actually, which was a high volume component, particularly for aerospace. And we knew that in order to meet the quality and the efficiency requirements we would need to be able to be successful on the quote, that we need to bring automation to the forefront. Early on in the bidding process, we brought ITI in to look at the component with us, help us develop a solution that we thought would be successful in winning the opportunity. We're a FANUC integrator, fixture builder, custom machine builder. We concept a lot of cells for customers all over the nation. We started talking about cycle time, how many parts we needed to make in an eight hour shift. They wanted a truly unattended automated robotic system that not only machined the parts, but also measured every part. No part could be put on the outfeed conveyor that was actually a bad part. The robot would take that part and put it on a quarantine rack. The new robotic cell was installed about a year ago. It consists of two vertical milling machines and a lathe. Integrated in that cell is a blow-off station, a CMM inspection station, a robot automatically loads the parts, automatically takes it off, puts it in the CMM, 100% inspect. So it's a self-contained three CNC machine, one inspection device with auto load and unload. Because of the nature of the material we are machining, we chose to use two Washion 1050B vertical machining centers, both box weight and gear headed spindles because of their rigidity and stability and cut. We chose for the fine boring and threading work to use a Washion Hi-Tech 230B because of its ability to maintain accuracy and hold tolerance through an unattended runtime. All three machines are using FANUC OI Model F controls. In the cell process, we're using custom macro B cycles and tool life management. FANUC is the majority of our shop. It's great because it, since it's so widely used in the industry, when we're looking for new machine operators, it's nice to know that it's not a niche market. It helps us to be able to recruit people and bring them in-house. And what's nice also is we run four shifts in our shop. So we're basically 24-6. And so we want the versatility to move our guys around. We really rely upon the accuracy of the FANUC robot to pick that part up and set that in the OP10 fixture accurately. And that truly is a large part of the success of this cell. A human would have a lot of trouble accurately positioning that part manually in that fixture. It forced us to go to an automated solution where the part was positioned by the robot. And the accuracy of the robot does that work. There are no human touches within the cell which creates a very substantial repeatability in the process of manufacturing. So the lack of human interaction with the cell actually creates a substantial amount of quality benefits because you don't have human error in load and unload. There's no real rotational clocking of the part. All it has is a convex detail on it, and that was coming in face up on the conveyor. So we implemented a 3D vision to map that and then orientate our roll to pick the part. Because it had no radial clocking, we had to place the part in the OP10 fixture with no locating features on the fixture itself. So the robot and the vision have to work very well to actually pick the part and place the part and be able to machine the part accurately. One thing that was really helpful for us when we were integrating is the fan of controls in the machining centers really have a seamless handshake when it comes to, to integrating to the FANUC robot. 
that same signal that it says I'm ready to have a part removed from the OP10 machine and I'm ready to have a part loaded in the OP10 machine is the same signal that we use in the OP20. That FANUC signal, that FANUC handshake made it you know, easier for us as an integrator to, to connect all the dots. Because of the material we're cutting, it is an absolute must to have redundant tooling set up. So by utilizing FANUC's tool life management, we're able to, once life is met, we are able to exchange to a fresh tool without interrupting the cycle. This is important to keep the cell uptime and because of the flexibility of FANUC, they allow us to create custom cycles to monitor the machining process and truly give us a hands-off approach. The whole plan is the more you're in metal, the more chips you cut, the better off you are. We did a strategy with the tooling to be able to, once a shift, get in there, change it out, get out and be done with it. It's been very successful, very hands-off, load up the conveyor, let it run, unload the conveyor, put them in the box. We would not have been able to win this work in our belief without the efficiencies and the quality environment that this cell brought to the table. So it allow us to win a very substantial piece of work that we would not have won but for the automated cell and the characteristics of what ITI created and helped us integrate. We're focused on continuous improvement constantly and any opportunity we have to bring automation bring more technology into the manufacturing process, we jump at those opportunities because those are the things that actually set you apart as a manufacturer. Really creates a competitive advantage at the end of the day.